Or polygons back to geometry today been doing a lot of ratios and proportions and let's see why what are similar polygons well there are polygons that uh, get blown up somebody put them through a two-time multiplier or the other way they put them through a one-half multiplier or times three or times 700 or whatever similar polygons used in everyday life on maps or my favorite example on a clipboard with a basketball court on it your coach says okay we're gonna have you stand here and then you throw the ball over there and then he does this and he comes here and he comes up and we score and yay so those are similar polygons they look the same scale as basketball court but they're just much smaller so it looks like a miniature any picture is really a scaled polygon it's not an actual size unless you have zoomed into the proper scale but you take a picture of a building on a three by five sheet and you've got a scaled polygon similar polygon so two polygons are similar if the corresponding angles are all congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional So here's my larger proportional triangle. Here's my smaller one. And we'll label this. And we'll label the angles. As you can probably guess, we'll be doing a little bit of making sure you match up the polygons properly. Triangles are only so hard. There's only three angles. Once you get two of them set up, the other one falls into place. But if we do a four or five or six side shape, it can get a little tricky. So let's say that it's a scale factor, more on that later, of two. And this is going to be five, six, and nine. That's that's pretty much it. That's how it works. It's not that hard, I hope. So how do we note this similarity? We do this. We say A, B, C, is similar to D, E, or the E, F. And does it matter if we line them up? Oh, yeah. So A is similar to D. Those angles are congruent. And those match up. B and E match up and C and F match up. So this means similar. It's like the congruent without the equal part. Now these are kind of ludicrous. Similar properties. We have to go through these. Similar is not congruent. It's not numbers, not a property of algebra. It's a new thing in geometry. So we have to you know, make sure we understand things are similar to themselves. Things can be similar to other things, which means that the first and last one would be similar. And the annoying one, symmetric. AB is similar to BA, therefore BA is similar to AB, which is kind of dumb. How often will you use these? You know the answer like I do, never. But good to be clear about the fact that we need properties when we do something new. Scale factor, which I almost always abbreviate as FF, SF. It's how much you either pumped up or, in this case, shrank down. You need to be clear about what you're defining where. We'll say these are squares. And we'll say this has a length of 6. And this has a length of 2. What is the scale factor going from the bigger to the smaller? Well, in that case, the scale factor equals 
from big to small, what did I have to multiply by? A lot of people want to say 6 over 2. In this case, it's 2 6, which I must rewrite as 1 third, as we talked about during ratios and proportions. Or we could say a scale factor from small to big. A lot of people get hung up on this. I do not. I don't really care. If you're not smart enough to look at a problem and say, oh, we're going from the smaller to the bigger one, we multiply by a larger number. Oh, we're going from the bigger to smaller one, we multiply by a number smaller than one. Well, we got problems. Try this on your own. What's the scale factor? Find x, y, and z, and then find the perimeters of both the quadrilaterals and the ratio of the perimeters. Pause it if you want, because now I'm going to do it. These line up like this, and just looking at them, it's pretty obvious. H, G, and C, D line up, so these two line up. I'm going to go from bigger to smaller, as I tend to do. So scale factor is 30 over 20, 3 over 2. You could write 1.5 if you want. So 3 halves times 30 is wrong. 3 halves times 20, so this is going this way. And you have to check like I just did. Make sure you do it right. So 3 halves times 20 is 20 over 2 is 10. 3 times 10 is 30. 3 halves times what equals 21? I'm going to guess 14. And then I'm going to check. Divide by 2 is 7 times 3 is 21. Great. 3 halves times 8 is 12. And 3 halves times 10 is 15. Looks good to me. Perimeter over here. Add them up. 30, 44, 8. Perimeter of the smaller one. Looks like it's 52. Perimeter of the bigger one. Thirty. Forty-two. Fifty-seven. Seventy-eight. And what's the scale factor of the perimeters? Hmm, beats me. I should probably use a calculator. But, and they're both available by 4, I think. Nope, by 2, though. 29 over 26. And it looks like I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, not 29. Oof, that was terrible. 39. Oh, and I can divide them both by 13. Three halves. Well, isn't that interesting? Same. This is a classic ACT question. They say, oh, these two have a scale factor of one half. What's their perimeter ratio? And the answer is the same. A lot of people waste a lot of time writing down a lot of information before they figure that out. You'll have lots of practice of this, of course. Try to remember, the ratio of the perimeters is the same as the ratio of each side, which is the same as the scale factor. When we get into area and volume in a few months, we'll do lots with scale factors, area ratios, and volume ratios. That's it. Good luck.